and welcome to Puffin HQ. Today I'm going to be building this function generator kit. And what this does is it puts out a bunch of different waveforms at different frequencies. And what I want to do is use this in the future to test some equipment and also some art projects and some general experimentation around the world of sound. Also, I haven't soldered anything for about 10 years, so I'm kind of hoping that this will be a tutorial but there's every chance it might just turn into a series of horrible mishaps. Okay, so we have hopefully some instructions. Yes. This is particularly important for things like resistors. The color coding on them is different, so it's important to make sure the right resistance values go in the right holes or this isn't gonna work. It comes with a circuit board already printed and all the connections are on the back. So all I need to do in theory is fit the components into the circuit board, solder it all neatly. And as long as there's no connections where we don't want them to be connections, it should work. Okay, so I'm just waiting for the soldering line to get up to temperature now. I've set it nominally at 330 Celsius. If the temperature is too hot, we'll probably find the soldering line tip starts to blacken, which isn't good. And if it's too cold, it means we'll physically have to hold the tip on the board for a long period of time and that risks damaging the components. So we just need to we just need to find a happy medium, really. And that stinks. So I guess it is getting nice and hot. It's actually up to temperature now. Yes. So a few other bits of essential kit. Uh, what we have are some snips. Um, when we make a connection, in order to make it easy to solder, all the components have long leads on them. Um, we don't want to leave the leads long because there's a risk they'll touch adjacent leads and we'll get um, we'll get short circuits. We'll make connections where we don't want them. And obviously what we need is solder, which is what we're going to melt onto the components in order to make a good connection. There's two types of solder. I think this one is lead coil, which is just standard. It melts quite easily. Lead is actually quite toxic, so um, make sure you wash your hands after using it. And maybe don't eat or drink while you're doing it. The other alternative is lead-free solder, and that's to get rid of the lead because lead is toxic, but the, a lot of the chemicals in lead-free solder are also very nasty, and it's not as easy to melt. So if you can stick to traditional lead solder, it's a bit like the difference between butter and margarine. They're both bad for you, but in moderation, maybe the traditional thing that we know what it's doing to your body, maybe that's actually the better option. It's not really like butter and margarine at all, is it? Okay. So there's many types of capacitor in this kit. We have ceramic and we have electrolytic. They're essentially the same thing. It's two conductive plates separated by a non-conducting or dielectric material. And they're used for a bunch of things because they can store current. So things like where you want to put out sudden high output current, like a flash in photography, they can be used to block direct current. They can be used to smooth current, but because they take time to charge and then discharge, charge and then discharge, there's obviously a frequency component there. And what that means for a circuit like this, where we actually want to give out a known frequency is they're actually used to tune the circuit to that frequency. So very useful. And the last thing that we have is a bunch of integrated circuits or ICs. Now all these are is equivalent to the larger components, but made small so that we can have lots of processes happening in a very compact package so that our circuit boards become much smaller and more efficient. And I think we have a couple of amplifiers here and a voltage regulator. So with the LEDs, it does matter which way around they go. So flat side to flat side. And what I'm going to do is just bend the leads out ever so slightly, because what that'll do is put pressure on the board so that when I turn it upside down to solder, it doesn't fall back out again. Just making sure the tip's nice and clean because it's gone more to black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the tip my very shaky hand against the pad and the lead for a second, feed the solder in, pull away. 
try not to breathe the smoke. That looks, you probably can't see that, but that looks okay. It's a nice mound. We want and we like a nice mound, don't we? And what we're looking for is the solder is actually completely surrounding the lead. It's completely on top of the pad. There's no what we call a dry joint. There's no gaps underneath where there's maybe not such a good connection. If there is, what you need to do is heat the solder up again, remove it, maybe by banging the circuit board or you can buy little pumps to suck the solder away and then just try again. It's practice, isn't it? It's not like I know what I'm doing either. Okay, I'm going in. Same again. Oh, I have such shaky hands. I'm putting the solder underneath the soldering iron and then lifting away. And then we have one LED done. And then actually, if you're gonna do this, if you're gonna snip, make sure you, you cover the lead so they don't fire into your eyeballs because that's not good. Although you might get more views on YouTube that way. Also, don't leave him lying around in the carpet because if Mr. Puffin comes home and he walks on that and he gets stuck in his foot, he's not going to be very happy. Okay, after about a year of procrastinating, I've finally got my first thing on the board. So now all I have to do is about another 20 things and then we should have a working signal generator. One thing I should mention is um, you can get these sort of weird kind of adjustable nipple clamp type devices and if you want you can use that to hold whatever you're soldering still they are literally called helping hands because it frees up your hands from doing something else in this case where i can lie the board flat it's not such a big problem but if you're doing something that moves around a lot like a cable for example or something that's got huge capacitors on it so it doesn't sit nice and flat on your workbench these are a relatively cheap investment, or alternatively, Blue Tuck is quite good for attaching things to your workbench too. So just, just try, whatever works for you, really. It's the first time I ever sold of anything. I was 16, and it's really important that you concentrate on what you're doing. I mean, that is hot, right? Don't be like stock photo soldering idiots. But the first time, first time I did it, I almost burnt my boyfriend's house down because I wasn't really concentrating because there was nice looking boys around. Oh, I've lost a bit of metal. I'll be shanking Mr. Puffin later. If you're doing a project like this, oh, I've got sweat in my eye. Um, the resistor code should be in the instructions. I think I threw them away, actually. Okay, so R1 to R9 is red, black, black, red, blue. Well, blue, blue. Red, oh, dearie me, my eyes are terrible. Don't get old, children. Oops. Actually smells quite nice, if I'm honest. I used to make a lot of these kits when I was um, probably about 10 years younger than I am now. And um, I had a bit of a shock. One day I made uh, I made this robot. It's like, it was like a robot crab or a robo crab, I don't know. And um, after I made it, it started chasing me around the room and I was genuinely frightened for my life. But I'd forgotten two very important things. One is that it was operated using light sensitive diodes, so it reacted to light. And the other thing is, I was holding a torch at the time. I felt a bit of an idiot after that, if I'm honest. So what I'm hoping with this channel is to do a bunch of experiments on tutorials. If there's anything you'd particularly like explaining in a sort of ham-fisted, amateurish kind of way, Feel free to get in touch in the comments or on Twitter at Blue Puffin Music. And um, I'm happy, more than happy, to try and demonstrate or explain whatever it is you want, as long as it's sound related. Hoping to get some live bands, live sessions, some backstage stuff too. So 
It's a bunch of things planned in the pipeline, a bunch of interesting things if this channel takes off. If not, it'll just be me howling into the void as usual. So, even though you can see, I'm not the neatest soldier in the world, but as long as none of the pads are touching each other where they shouldn't be, it's fine. Don't, don't remember that, it's an important rule in life. As long as nothing's touching where it shouldn't be touched, everything's fine. Let's see what I've done there as I picked up the wrong bloody thing. That is not the right resistor. Pay attention to what you're doing. That is wrong. That would cause havoc. Red, black, black, red. It's entirely possible I will die making this video. And the last image the universe will have of me is just of this horrible, pink, sweating, incompetent fool with shaking hands. I am suffering for my art. Ooh, that was a good one. Tiny error there. What I'm going to have to do is pull that one off. I can work out which one it is. Fourth one up. Ah. Hot, obviously. So what happened then was I banged the board and a blob of solder flew off, very much like how the Terminator moves around in Terminator 2 when he becomes kind of a globby, gelatinous, metallic mass. So that was briefly very exciting. Okay, so that's the first set of resistors done, mistake found, corrected, moving on. Can you handle the excitement of a slightly different colour code on the resistors? So we've got a couple of leads that are very close to touching, which you probably can't see just above where this finger is. So I'm just going to see if I can tidy them up a bit. Safety first. Audio recording. Yep, had a bit of an intermission to cool down, mainly for the equipment actually. Everything is maxing out, we're going to be horrible bonfire type situation. Anyway, did a few more bits off camera just to save you the tedium of watching a woman solder some pieces. I think the hardest thing that, well, what I find hardest is these little, um, these holders for the integrated circuits. What's tricky about them is the, the leads are all very close together. So you have to be really careful that you don't create any connections where you don't want them. But that's all done. The nice thing about having the connectors come with the integrated circuits is it means you don't actually have to put the integrated circuit on the board and expose it to the temperatures of the soldering iron while you're doing it. ICs have gone on. I finished off the million and three resistors. A couple of switches have gone on. What do we have left? Okay, we have a bunch of capacitors. That's the first thing. As I mentioned before, this is ceramic capacitor. These don't care about positive and negative they can go on the board either way around they are marked with a code but you need the eyesight of superman to be able to read it bend the legs make sure the tip's clean this is sounding like a really weird porno heat the pad and the lead solder in solder out iron out <sighs> don't breathe the steam smoke poison toxic whatever all right, and again, because I've got some components quite close together, I just want to really make sure I trim off as much of the lead as possible so that I'm not creating a circuit connection where I don't want one. Oh, you two, get a room. Okay, there's a good bit of space between them now, so that's all looking nice and shiny. Robocrab. It's not Robocrab, it's, it's a function generator, I think I mentioned that. This is the other type of capacitor, and this does actually matter which way around it goes. Where this grey strip is and where the shorter of the two leads are, that's actually the negative side. 
there is actually a small plus marked on there to show which is the positive. So the negative is marked on this, the positive is marked on this, a bit backwards. Get in there, <laughs> getting through this together, you and me. Okay, diode. This is another component that requires to be connected the correct direction or it won't work. And again, we have a stripe. I don't know how well you can see that because it's very tiny, but there's a little gray stripe at one end of the diode and there's a corresponding stripe on the circuit board. So I just need to make sure my stripes line up and we're good to go. Fortunately, I told all my soldering anecdotes in the first three or four resistors, which means I've got nothing left now. And I could tell a crab story again, but maybe tell it a bit better this time. What else do we have? Not much. Three bits to go and then the ICs to plug in and that's it. What's this? That looks like power supply. <laughs> I haven't cut myself. That's just marker pen. I'm writing scripts earlier. I did I do script this. So this is a variable resistor, which is, as the name suggests, it's like a normal resistor, but you can sweep it with a dial to change the resistance, which will change the current on the circuit. And in this case, it's going to control the volume from the speaker. Well, that was the last piece. But I've still got space on the circuit board. So if you're watching this maplin, I'm going to come at you with the fury of 10,000 angry steeds because that's really bloody annoying. 